It's been two months since that horrific massacre at the Pulse nightclub, but for those who survived, the heartache is still fresh. We traveled back to Orlando to follow up with those loved ones whose lives were forever changed. One grieving mother now turned accidental activist. Speaking out for gun control in the midst of this contentious political season, vowing, as she says, to turn her tragedy into triumph. Here's a picture of him at his birthday. He was one of the good ones. You would have loved him as your neighbor, as your son, as your cousin. You would have loved him because he was what we want to be. For Christine Leinenen, life will never be the same. So this is uh, unfortunately what you're left with when your son suddenly gets massacred. You bring his furniture into your space. Here inside her living room, she's surrounded by the belongings of the son she lost. I've just really shoved everything in wherever I could find a space. I don't want to get rid of his things. They're so much a part of him. This is all I have. This is what he loved. It's been two months since that frenzied morning when the world saw this confused and frightened mother's face for the first time. Well, they said there's a lot of dead bodies in the club. Her only son, Christopher, and his boyfriend, Juan Guerrero, gunned down among the 49 killed at the gay nightclub Pulse. I called him last night at 6 o'clock. And I left him with, I love you, Chris. The crush of cameras now gone, but the city of Orlando still reeling from the deadliest mass shooting in modern American history. And 62 days later, it's just as easy to legally purchase an assault rifle in the state of Florida. You're focusing your attention on the high capacity assault rifle, the yes. type of weapon that was used. Right. No one needs a high powered weapon, no one. The gunman managed to wound victims with more than 200 bullets. Christine and so many others learning the gruesome details of their loved one's murder in autopsy results released just last week. Why is it so important for you to have that information? Well, I need to know, even though it haunts me that he was slaughtered and his entire torso was tore up with seven to nine bullets, so many shots so quickly, so easily, and that he legally bought that high-powered weapon just one week before the shooting. One last victim still clings to life in the hospital all these days later. But the damage left behind, not right just there. physical, the emotional scars are now fueling the nation's outrage and reigniting questions about gun control. But despite a passionate Senate filibuster and that dramatic sit-in on the House floor led by Congressman John Lewis, Every single piece of legislation has since failed. We don't know who is going to be the next mass shooter. All we can do is try to protect ourselves from this type of weapon so that when they do get their fuse lit, that maybe we can overcome them relatively quickly. She echoed that sentiment in front of thousands at the Democratic National Convention, supported by two of her son's friends. Love always trumps hate. Her home state of Florida, now a battleground in every sense of the word. She's been campaigning with pro-gun control Senate hopeful Patrick Murphy, working to unseat Republican Marco Rubio. We can solve this, and we can solve this by this election. For the many survivors of the Pulse rampage, the emotional wounds only seem to deepen. 21-year-old Tiara Parker was shot that night after what started out as a night out dancing with her cousin and a close friend. I met with her just hours after she was released from the hospital. Can you see the holes? Those are the bullet holes? Mm -hmm. yeah. That's unbelievable. Yeah. For three torturous hours, the trio was trapped in the nightclub bathroom. So the bullet went in there? Yeah, it went in here and it came out of my back. And then a chilling moment coming face to face with the killer. I guess he must have thought I died with my eyes open. And I just kind of kept staring at him. And, I, and from then, I thought in my mind that he was going to shoot me in my face. But like I was just sitting there, and I just stared at him. And he like then after he got up, you just hear him say, oh, yeah. She and her friend Patience Carter managed to survive the horror. But her cousin, Akira Murray, who just graduated high school, died 
that tragic night. I'm pushing through as much as I can. Earlier this week, I checked in on Tiara in her hometown of Philadelphia. Describe the pain. I feel like my lungs are caving in. Like there's no light nowhere. I'm just spinning in one circle. That's how I feel. But even from the depths of despair. I'm Sierra. She's risen to help inspire others. Last week, she appeared on stage with Jessica Alba as an honoree for the Teen Choice Courage Award. Tonight, we stand together with these teens, united in our call for peace and an end to this violence. But even as she's recognized for her heroism, the unrelenting cycle of gun violence continues. A man was shot three times in North Philadelphia. Two weeks ago, another of her beloved cousins murdered. 24-year-old Dante Williams killed by an unknown gunman. I want to be able to go over and say, hey, cousin, be able to hug him. Like, I don't think nobody understand. Like, they were like my close-knit. Like, they meant everything to me. I seen Dante two days before he was killed. I had my cousin in my lap. <laughs> she, as she was breathing, trying to take her last breath. I, I try to stay focused, and like when I feel like stopping, I hear them. Sleepless nights, recurring nightmares. Tiara experiencing the classic symptoms of post-traumatic stress. She says she's still hoping to find the right treatment. As for Christine's healing process. What I have found is that has been the most cathartic, believe it or not, has been being around Christopher's friends. I loved them all before anyway. I was always stealing his friends on Facebook. They'd say, <laughs> Mom, stop stealing my friends. I'd say, I won't say anything creepy, I promise. On Facebook, he <laughs> said something about a cake or something? On this night, Christine's hanging out with some of her son's closest friends. Brandon and his boyfriend Eric were out with her son and Juan that night at Pulse, but managed to run out when the shooting began. You're two months out now. What goes through your mind when you think of that night? What goes through my mind is not that I escaped death, not that I was lucky in any way, but that two of my very best friends did not escape death. I never want this to happen to anybody else. Which is why Brandon and some of Christopher's other friends created The Drew Project, an organization that promotes gay-straight alliances to help LGBT youth. Gay people really struggle to survive every day. For someone to come into our home where we feel safe, where we love each other, where we protect each other and harm us like this, if that's not a rallying call, and I don't know what else we need. Turning pain into purpose in honor of their beloved Christopher. When this matures, it's going to have a rainbow bark. Christine planting a eucalyptus tree in memory of her son. Hopefully this will be Christopher's blooming corner with flowers and rainbows and um, in honor of him. I'm not the same. On June 12th, I became a different Christine, one that's going to be more powerful in some ways, but so lost and empty in so many ways. Of course, our hearts go out to all the families touched by this tragedy.